Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, the show where we dive into the microscopic drama unfolding in our bodies and try not to let it go to our heads. I'm Ethan Foster, your affable observer of everything delightfully odd about human behavior, and apparently about our cells as well. And I'm Alara Skye, who can't resist turning biochemical mayhem into comedic gold. If you're new here, buckle up. We'll walk you through an enlightening yet entertaining journey about how our bodies heal, sometimes a bit too enthusiastically. Today's episode is all about keloids. If you think scarring is just your skin's quaint way of saying, been there, done that, get ready for a curveball. Keloids are more like the overdramatic friend who takes center stage and refuses to leave. They're thick, raised scars that can keep growing beyond the original injury, sort of like a group chat that never stops. Most scars fade out quietly after they've done their cameo. Keloids come back for an encore, rummage through the snack table, and bring their entire extended family to the party. They're itchy, painful, and impossible to ignore. And for years, treatments were limited. But here's where it gets interesting. Vitamin D, yes, the sunshine nutrient, may play a starring role in taming these pesky scars. You'd think vitamin D, the same stuff we associate with strong bones and maybe a little mood boost, wouldn't be connected to something as specialized as keloids. But apparently, it's been under our nose, or more accurately, under our skin, this whole time. Recent findings suggest that if your vitamin D is broken down too quickly at the wound site, your skin can't reap its benefits. Cue the drum roll for our troublemaking enzyme, CYP24A1. That's the enzyme that steps in like an uninvited auditor at a party, telling vitamin D to pack its bags before it can do its healing magic. Keloid-prone skin has way too much of this enzyme. It's like your body is hitting the fast-forward button on vitamin D metabolism, leaving nothing for your poor skin to use. Imagine you finally bought a brand new gadget, all excited to use it and your friend snatches it away, tosses it in a shredder, and hands you a pile of scrap. That's what's happening to vitamin D in keloid skin. No matter how much you have in your bloodstream, if CYP24A1 is overactive, your skin remains functionally deficient. Exactly. And that, folks, explains why conventional advice like, just take more vitamin D, hasn't been very effective for people with these stubborn scars. It's like pouring more water into a bucket with a hole in the bottom, still ends up empty. Researchers got the bright idea to see if they could block this enzyme, telling it to back off. And when they did, something magical happened. Vitamin D stuck around longer, regulated collagen production properly, and told those overzealous cells to quit hogging the stage. That's the gist. Block the enzyme, let vitamin D do its job, and keloid tissue chills out and starts behaving like normal skin. Suddenly, it's not auditioning for the biggest scar of the year award. The biggest surprise is that even if your blood work says you have adequate vitamin D, your skin might still be bankrupt on the local level. It's the local environment that matters for scarring, and keloid cells are notorious for chewing up vitamin D faster than you can say CYP24A1. So effectively, they discovered a new door to walk through in keloid therapy. Instead of simply hacking away at the scar or injecting weird substances into it, you could zero in on the enzyme that's blocking vitamin D. If you reduce or inhibit CYP24A1, you restore a normal feedback loop, reduce inflammation, and keep collagen from piling up like laundry on a teenager's bedroom floor. It's a refreshing approach because it gets to the underlying dysfunction. Keloids have always been regarded as these unstoppable bulldozers, but now there's evidence that says, no, we can just take the keys away from the bulldozer driver. That driver, in this case, is an overactive enzyme. Speaking of unstoppable bulldozers, you know what's also unstoppable when it gets going? Inflammation. Keloids bring along a persistent, low-grade swelling that fuels their growth. According to the research, once vitamin D isn't being prematurely booted out, it helps dial down those inflammatory signals. Vitamin D has a starring role as peacekeeper among fibroblasts, those cells that produce collagen. Normally, they patch you up like a responsible contractor. With keloids, though, they're more like a sugar-crazed kid building a tower out of marshmallows. Just too much. Vitamin D steps in and says, easy now, no need to splurge on all that collagen. The result? A more controlled healing process. And for those who already have a mountain of vitamin D in their bloodstream but are scratching their heads wondering why they still have keloids, the puzzle piece might be that local deficiency. It's not about total vitamin D in your body, it's about how your skin uses it. That's actually a nifty point. It clarifies why standard supplementation rarely gets the job done for keloids. The problem isn't supply, it's activation and maintenance at the site of injury. You're basically uploading the right software, but the local firewall, namely CYP24A1, keeps shutting it down. And there's more to vitamin D's skin love affair. Another study, yes, they're just stacking up the evidence, looked at how vitamin D affects wound healing and skin barrier function in general. Turns out vitamin D helps your skin stay hydrated, reduces water loss, and speeds up tissue repair like it's got somewhere to be. That's basically the trifecta of good skin. Proper hydration, a strong barrier, and quick healing. Sign me up. 
Now, can you explain the mechanics? Because, you know, I love a good analogy. With pleasure. If your skin is a castle, hydration is the moat, preventing invaders from crossing easily. The barrier is the castle wall itself, and wound healing is the team of masons ready to patch things up when they get damaged. Vitamin D is like the supply lines bringing in materials and keeping everyone well-fed. When you have enough vitamin D, your castle stands strong, and any damage is quickly mended. According to the data, people who took vitamin D saw a significant drop in wound size in a relatively short period. Meanwhile, their skin hydration soared, and something called transepidermal water loss went down. That's basically your skin's measure of how leaky the barrier is. Less leakage, more resilience. Absolutely, and those results underscore that vitamin D isn't a one-trick pony. It's not just about bone health, it's about the entire architecture of your body. Your skin, being your largest organ, soaks up a lot of that benefit when vitamin D is properly managed. So the question is, how do we optimize vitamin D so our skin can bask in its glow? The short answer is, get some safe sun exposure and watch out for dietary pitfalls that might sabotage you. Let's talk about that because, from what I've gathered, not all sun exposure is created equal. Correct. If you've been fueling up on processed foods and vegetable oils, you're chock full of linoleic acid, or LA, which tends to make skin super susceptible to sunburn. That's like coating your skin in an accelerant before stepping into a bonfire. Not the best plan. So the logic is, if you cut out the majority of seed oils, reduce your LA intake, your skin becomes more robust against sun damage. Then you can safely soak in vitamin D from that big fiery ball in the sky without ending up looking like a lobster? Exactly. And if you can't avoid the midday sun at first because your diet isn't fully sorted, there are some supportive strategies. You could incorporate astaxanthin or topical niacinamide, or even consider molecular hydrogen to combat oxidative stress. But the long-term goal is to tweak your diet and lifestyle so you can gather vitamin D the old-fashioned way through measured sun exposure. The measured part is crucial. Once your skin starts turning pink, it's time to call it a day. You don't want to burn, because burning is basically your skin's alarm system, telling you that damage has occurred. You want that sweet spot where you produce enough vitamin D without turning your next shower into a painful experience. Couldn't have said it better myself. And while we're at it, let's talk about skin color. People with darker skin naturally have more melanin, which is fabulous for blocking ultraviolet radiation, but also means they need more time in the sun to generate adequate vitamin D. It's not a one-size-fits-all scenario. There's some nuance to how we approach this. Lighter skin? You might only need a short window before your vitamin D levels get a lovely boost. Darker skin? You can tolerate longer, but you also need it to get the same vitamin D production. It's not about fairness, it's just how biology rolls. And if you do find yourself coping with slow healing wounds, persistent scarring, or keloids, you might want to consider the bigger picture. Maybe your body's relationship with vitamin D has gone sour. Or, more specifically, your body's local metabolism is sabotaging it at the site where it matters most. So the big takeaway? Vitamin D matters for skin health in ways we didn't fully grasp before. It's involved not just in how fast you heal, but whether you overheal. Keloids are like a cautionary tale of what happens when that system is out of whack. And the cutting-edge research out of the Burns and Trauma Journal suggests that when you halt the breakdown of vitamin D by targeting this enzyme, you can potentially rein in keloid formation. It's a fresh approach that gets to the root cause rather than just treating the result of runaway scarring. And we can't overlook that even people with sufficient vitamin D levels in their blood might still see keloids if their skin's environment is letting the enzyme run wild. That's why it's so crucial for future treatments to localize the strategy, addressing that metabolic tug of war in the skin rather than just pumping more vitamin D into your system. It's the difference between distributing flyers all over town when the problem is actually inside your house. You can't fix a broken window by scattering pamphlets on the sidewalk. You have to get in there and do the repair work. Exactly. And once you do, that's where the real transformation happens. From chronic scarring to a more controlled, healthy healing process, less pain, less itching, less discomfort, and fewer creative explanations about that mysterious scar that you swear came from a sword fight or skydiving incident. Good story material, though. But yes, fewer tall tales and more functional skin. A bright future indeed. Which leads me to wonder, do you think we'll eventually see a standard protocol that says, we'll check your vitamin D, test for enzyme overactivity, and then tailor your treatment accordingly? That's the dream. Personalized medicine is all the rage, and with good reason. If you're dealing with a local enzyme that's misbehaving, a targeted approach is the next logical step. Blanket solutions are so 20th century. And beyond keloids, we might even see this approach help with other chronic skin conditions that have an inflammatory component. Maybe psoriasis or severe eczema could benefit from the same principle. Let vitamin D stick around to calm things down. Vitamin D influences so many cellular functions that if we harness it properly, we could see improvements across the board. Let's recap for clarity. Keloids happen when the body's wound healing goes into overdrive. 
A key enzyme, CYP24A1, breaks down vitamin D too fast, depriving the skin of a major regulatory factor. Block this enzyme, vitamin D remains active longer, and scarring doesn't get out of hand. Meanwhile, separate research shows vitamin D helps wounds heal faster, improves skin hydration, and strengthens the barrier. And let's not forget the lifestyle angle. Safe sun exposure, lowering linoleic acid intake, and being mindful of your unique skin tone. Just a few changes can improve how your skin deals with damage and uses vitamin D. That's a pretty comprehensive game plan. Anyone listening, if you've ever felt like your scars have a life of their own, it might be time to investigate these lesser-known pathways. There's a lot going on beneath the surface. Keloids are more than just an annoyance. They're a peek into how complex the healing process is and how crucial vitamin D is for keeping that process from turning into a dermatological circus. Speaking of circuses, we've reached the point in our show where we remind everyone that the quest to control keloids and optimize vitamin D is ongoing. The research is promising, but there's more to uncover. Meanwhile, basic steps like a better diet, moderate sun exposure, and investigating new strategies to inhibit CYP24A1 might be the ticket. Precisely. And with that, I hope we've left you with a sense of possibility and a dash of humor. Because if there's anything more stubborn than a keloid, it's ignorance about what vitamin D can really do. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this enlightening trek through the wonderful and occasionally weird world of healing and scar formation. I'm Ethan Foster, your daily reminder that sometimes the simplest molecules have the biggest impact. And I'm Alara Skye, reminding you that a bit of wit and a healthy dose of vitamin D can do wonders for our well-being. Tune in next time for more cellular wisdom. Until then, stay radiant, stay curious. And if you spot a runaway scar, remember, there may be an enzyme behind the curtain pulling the strings. Couldn't have said it better myself. Take care, folks. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.